Hey students, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how I solve random hurdles. Here's the problem. You're supposed to write a, pro a program that has Carol run to the other side of the first street, so run along the bottom only, the bottom row, jumping over all the hurdles. Carol should only jump if there's a hurdle. Oh, there must, we must, we're going to need an if statement, aren't we? We're going to say if there's a hurdle, right? If the way is blocked, then jump a hurdle. Else, do something else. Okay, so probably an if else statement. It says, uh, however, the hurdles can be in random locations. And that's, that's the tricky part of this. We've done this before with jumping hurdles, but the, the hurdles have always been spaced evenly apart. But when they're not spaced evenly apart, we have to use a little bit more logic to figure it out. Here's a key. It says here, the world is 14 avenues long. So again, avenues, that means columns. So there's 14 columns in every world. They're all the same size. So you can see all the worlds. Here, it's just that the, 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 the hurdles are in different places. Okay. It says you must write a function named jump hurdle as part of your solution. So let's go. All right. Let's just start out by writing jump hurdle. So we're going to write a function. Remember, uh, our functions cannot be nested one inside the other. So make sure uh, you put this function definition below the other one. And to jump a hurdle, we'll just assume we're standing right in front of the hurdle. What do we do? We um, turn left. We move. We turn right. This is super Carol, so it already knows how to turn right. Then we move again. Then we turn right again. And then we move. Now we're moving down towards, back down towards the ground and we turn left and now we're ready to go from there. So that is how we jump a hurdle. Now, up here in our start function, we have to write the rest of our code up here. So we got to think about this again. Every world is different and that hurdles are in different positions. And we see there's four different worlds that we have to solve for. In fact, in this last world, there's literally a hurdle in every spot. So obviously what we're going to do, it says, um, if there's a, if there's a hurdle, uh, meaning yeah, if there's a hurdle, then jump it. Otherwise move would be kind of what we need to do. Cause we're either, we're either doing one of two things all along here. We're either jumping a hurdle or moving forward. So that's, that's the, the solution in a, in a nutshell. So how would we do that? We could write an if statement, if. And let's see, there's a condition called front is blocked. So that would, that would describe a hurdle. So if the front is blocked, then call the jump hurdle function. Makes sense. And then else, we could do an else statement saying that if the front is not blocked, what should we do? We should move. So that's the power of an if else statement. It gives us two options. One, if the condition is true, that the front is blocked, we should jump a hurdle, otherwise move. And that's really all we have to do to go all the way along here is one of those two things, either jump a hurdle or move. So let's try it. Let's save it and let's run it. And we'll see that because the front is blocked, he jumps a hurdle, which he's doing right now, and then stops. So we successfully jumped the first hurdle. The way it was blocked, so we jumped a hurdle, but then it stopped and we're not in the right spot. And if we check code over here, we'll see that some of this is great. We have a jump hurdle. Some of, some of this is good, but we have not solved the worlds because we need to be in the far right corner. So obviously what we're missing here is, is a loop. We need to do what we've just done, but do it over and over again. So up here at the top of our start function, we need a loop. Now, this is, this is the tricky part of this assignment. Most people, because we've been studying while loops lately, their first uh, inclination is to use a while loop, do something like while front is clear, stuff like that, do this. But the problem with that is that it might work okay, but when you get to the far right side, you'll end up crashing into the wall. Um, and so what you need to do here, and it's, it's at the heart of understanding the difference between while loops and for loops. Remember, you learned in this class that while loops are controlled by a condition. And that condition, uh, it just keeps looping until the condition is false. Um, and that, 
doesn't work quite as well in this situation. What works better in this situation, and if we go back to the exercise, we'll see the clue. It says the world is 14 avenues long. And whenever they tell you something in the exercise instructions, it's usually there for a reason. They're telling you that every world is the same size. And we learned that when we're doing looping, if we know how many times we want to loop, we should use a for loop. Because a for loop has a set number of times. So what we'll do here is go for var i gets zero semicolon i less than now we could do we put 14 there or not but if you think about it even though there's 14 avenues we're only going to do something either move or jump 13 times because if you count the spots from uh, the lower left to the lower right that's 13 moves so we're going to go 13 times and then we're going to say i plus plus and put in our curly braces now, obviously, we got a loop. There's nothing in it. So we got to take all of this code here, highlight it in blue, click and drag it inside the for loop, then fix all our indenting because that's important. All our indenting needs to be done correctly. And we have the right number of curly braces here. How do we know that? Well, these, these curly braces go with the if statement here. This one goes with the for loop and this last one down here goes with the start function. All right, everything looks good. So let's give this a try now. Again, the front is blocked, so it jumps a hurdle. And now in the next spot, because we're in a loop, we're in the second loop and he moves twice because it was the way wasn't blocked. Now it's blocked, so he jumps a hurdle. In the next instance, he will move. Okay, and the next one, the front is blocked, so he jumps, etc. And so each time in the loop, he's going to decide either to jump a hurdle or to move. And that's it. And it's the key here is understanding that it's a fixed number of times that we loop. When we get down here to the far right, here in a second, he will go ahead and just stop. And the reason that works, again, he, he knows he's supposed to go 13 times and he stops. If we had used a while loop there and said something like while uh, front clear, whatever our condition, I can't remember, um, he would have actually turned left right here and tried to jump because the way was blocked, tried to jump right here and then run into the wall. And that's, that's what most people are, are discovering. So the key here is using a for loop instead of a while loop. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.